Hang on. Hold, hold, hold your thoughts there. Craig Wynn, Jalal, um, uh, uh, um, Abu Arub, join us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Have you two ever spoken before? Nope. I challenged him to a debate last year, and he called me a moron. Hold on, you both, you both, you said what? Hundreds of words by uh, by email exchange, which you can go and listeners can go to pen uh, and read under the uh, debate uh, forum. Okay. Are the words that um, that Jal and I uh, exchanged. We got a debate. We got dueling websites. We got two points of view, and I, I I'm grateful to both of you. And hey, I'm glad that this is the first time you two have spoken in person. Uh, a little bit of history being made here on the Mike Gallagher Show. We'll continue. One eight hundred six five five Mike is our toll free number if you want to join in on this conversation between Craig Wynn and Jalul Abdullahul. We'll continue debating, trying to analyze, trying to understand what Islam really means as the Mike Gallagher Show continues. It's their religious duty. And I'm awfully pleased that we have two guests to debate that with you here. Craig Wynn, author of Prophet of Doom, Islam's Terrorist Dogma in Muhammad's Own Worlds, Own Words, and Jalal Abu Arug, who's the author of Prophet of Mercy, which is being written in response to Craig's book, uh, Jalal, let, let me just just ask you. I know Craig, you want to address something that Jalal said a minute or so ago, but but I must ask you. There's been much said about the perception that there has been a lack of outrage in the Muslim world until only very recently regarding the terrorism we've seen. Do you think that that perception is accurate? It's accurate if you want to hear the Western media, because the Western media did not emphasize the fact that so many scholars of Islam. And uh, actually, the second, the next day of 9/11, I gave a speech at my own mosque in Orlando, Florida, and the people can remember that. I denounced that. I've been saying it even before 9/11 that terrorism has nothing to do with Islam. And uh, I just challenge, I, ch I challenge them to bring a single quote in the Quran that calls for these acts in specific. Okay. I mean, directly. And even as never answered that question. Craig? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, but again, I'm uh, required to uh, to confront a point that uh, Jal just uh, made. Uh, Barak, who would be the senior Islamic cleric in Saudi Arabia, uh, said this, I am against America. She is the root of all evils and wickedness on earth. Muslims do not take Jews and Christians as allies. Muslim brothers do not have any mercy or compassion on them, their blood, their money, or their flesh. Their women are yours to take legitimately. Allah made them yours. Why don't you enslave their women? Why don't you wage jihad? Why don't you pillage them? Jalal, what about, what about that cleric? What about that cleric? Wait a minute. What about that cleric saying that, that Jalal? That's not a senior cleric. Actually, the senior clerics of Saudi Arabia have denounced that man and his statements. Plus, Barak is not the Quran. Why can't he quote the Quran or the prophetic Sunnah? That's what he needs to do. Not quote fanatical Muslims what they say. I mean, Craig, Craig Jalal says that these are just fanatics saying those kinds oh, yeah, of things. That's the reason why Barack was the uh, the host of the of the telethon hosted by the Fahd family for uh, raising uh, money for the Palestinian terrorists in uh, in Israel. <laughs> let's quote from the uh, let's quote from the Quran and from the uh, the Sunnah. Okay. Uh, first. Um, uh, in the last surah re revealed in, in verse 574, um, Allah uh, uh, defines uh, unbelieving infidel as Christians. Surely they are infidels who say that uh, that uh, Jesus, the uh, the son of Mary, uh, is uh, is God. So those would be Christians. Are we are we infidels, Jalal? Those of us who are Christians. We are, you to us, uh, are, the, uh, uh, are the same as we are to you. Does it say in any do Christian doctrine, doctrine that Muslims have a chance to go to heaven if they don't believe in Jesus as the Lord and Savior? This is hypocrisy. You don't consider us. Christians do not consider us believers in God. Why do you require us to believe in you that you are believers in God if you have a different uh, creed? Don't go away. This continues on the Mike Gallagher Show. In the National Dialogue. We also have two distinct voices in the dialogue and debate about what Islam really means. And I'm very grateful to Craig Wynn, author of Prophet of Doom and Tea with Terrorists, who joins us on Newsmaker Line number one. On Newsmaker Line number two, Jalal Abu Arub, who's the author of The Prophet of Mercy, which is in progress. Uh, Jalal, let me, let me start this section with you. Um, Craig maintained, you mentioned something a few minutes ago that intrigued me. You, you referred to the uh, Arabic Quran. Is the Arabic Quran 
different or does it instruct possibly differently than a Quran that might be translated into another language? Uh, the translation, as you know, it's, it's meant to be simple. It's not a depth. And it is the choice of the translator, actually, not the choice of the Quran. The Arabic language is, is much deeper than you can imagine. Uh, any Arabic word can mean a, a host of things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, when we translate it, uh, we, we seek simplicity, you know, so people can understand. But that doesn't mean that's the whole story. I mean, what he did, he rearranged the Qur'an, the Qur'an is in Arabic. How can you rearrange it? You don't even understand the language. You have access to translations, which is the choice of the translator. Sure. So, Craig, is there a problem with the way you've translated the Qur'an? Because I know you've said many times you've spent thousands and thousands of hours studying the Qur'an. If you don't speak Arabic, what language did you study it in? Uh, I'm sorry, Craig. I start, Craig, start over again, Craig. I had your I had your button pushed down. Uh, I apologize. The uh, the Quran is actually written uh, in a uh, in an ancient form of uh, of Arabic called Paleo Arabic. It was uh, written long before there were vowels in the uh, in the language, uh, and therefore there are maybe uh, 500 people on the planet at any one time who actually understand Paleo uh, Arabic. It is different from modern standard Arabic as Latin is uh, from, uh, from Italian. Second, uh, rather than uh, depend on one person's uh, interpretations of the, uh, of the words in the, uh, in the Sirah, the Takrith, uh, and the Hadith, uh, as well as the Quran, I have 12 different Qurans. I used five of them uh, in, uh, in rendering the translations in, uh, in Prophet of Doom so they would be as accurate as absolutely possible. And the scholars who, uh, who made these translations, um, uh, for the most part, agree on the, uh, on the terminology. Um, and by using five of them, it, uh, it becomes evident as to what the intent of the message uh, was. Well, let me one last thought. The fact is that we all speak English here. Uh, on this radio show, if we were all uh, gibbering away in Paleo uh, Arabic, not a single soul on the planet would know what we're talking about. So, well, <laughs> it, it just doesn't make any sense. The Paleo Arabic is talking about. My children here, who are living in America, can understand it very well. We read the Quran exactly as, as it was read before. What he's saying doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't, if there are only 500 or where 500 people who understand it, how can he understand it then? <laughs> how? I mean, what, what, how, how have you translated, Craig? I guess Jalal's point is, you, he, he claims your translation is dubious at best. Well, first of all, I just told you, I didn't translate the Quran. I relied on 12 translations of it, five of which comprised the translations in Prophet of Doom. Second of all, if you will read the, uh, um, the appendix of, uh, of Prophet of Doom, which is called Islam's Dark Past, you will find scholars of every ilk from generations uh, current and gone by who confirm precisely what I just said in terms of the different nature of the, uh, of the language that the Quran was uh, revealed in without vocalization, which means that it cannot be pronounced in the form that it was originally uh, written. And therefore, uh, the that is absolutely accurate. All right, go ahead, Jalal. Um, uh, I, I, I want to make a note. He's talking longer than me. Let me speak. You, you go right ahead. Uh, what, what he's talking about is different. It, the way it was written before is different. The words are still the same. We recite the Quran every day in our prayer. And we understand exactly what it means. He doesn't make any sense. We understand the Quran perfectly. And secondly, the translators or the scholars he's talking about, none of them said that Muslims can commit suicide or kill women and children in war. That's what he's avoiding answering. Where is the quote in the Quran that says kill women and children? Uh, final thing, I, I, this is what I want him to say. I want him to say the Quran says, the Lord said, Lay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. This is one Samuel, fifteen two to three. Bring something in the Quran similar to this. Okay, Craig. Um, I'm not going to get into a discussion on uh, on comparative uh, scriptures, uh, <laughs> but what I will uh, uh, do because I would take far too much time uh, today. Let me uh, read uh, three examples. I mean, he keeps saying, "Is there anything in the?" 